Hi, welcome back to blah, 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 blah. I'm humble. We're going to start this today. Uh, we're going to start this today. I hope. I haven't tried it yet. I'm giving you like proper first start uh, reaction, everything. So I've got water in it. No water leaks. I've got oil in it. No oil leaks. I filled the differential. No diff leaks. Got the axles in. You can see here. No leaks. Seals are good. I put fuel in it. Ran the fuel pump. Nice and dry still. Actually, I say that. Let me double check. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And all good up here. Everything dry. Everything dry. Our runs look good. I've got our uh, breather hose. This is all sealed up now. Um, no spark plugs yet, but key on. That's both of our fuel pumps going. If you watch, uh, this is our oil pressure when I crank it. Good oil pressure. I, I'm gonna put the spark plugs in it really quick and we're gonna see if this runs. Moment of truth. Let's see if it starts. Well, I think that's a no, but I can smell fuel. So I think the injectors are going. Um, maybe it's just not enough or there's timing. This is whatever base map was loaded on the Emerald ECU. So I don't even know if it's right in any way. Uh, so it looks like I'm gonna have to hit it with the laptop and uh, try and, and get uh, some kind of a base map or something that'll work. But important takeaway from uh, this little endeavor is that uh, we have fuel, we have oil, we have water, we have trans fluid, we have diff fluid. All the fluids are in the car, everything's topped off, and we don't have any leaks. Uh, we have oil pressure. Uh, I don't know if you saw from the gauge earlier, but we're running uh, like two and a half, almost three bar 
oil pressure under cranking and no oil leaks, which is good. I mean, well, so far so good. And uh, the I assume there's fuel pressure. I don't have a fuel pressure gauge, but I'm running the uh, regulator that uh, GBS includes with their kit, which I think is set to somewhere around 40 PSI or thereabouts. So uh, uh, I'm assuming that uh, we have fuel pressure and I can hear the fuel returning to the tank in the rear. So I know it's going completely through the circuit. Um, I can hear both pumps working, both the lift pump in the back and the pressure pump in front. So I know uh, at least both of those systems are working. Uh, and I really think it's down to uh, uh, maybe just fuel timing, ignition timing or something like that. Uh, which I'll need to sort out with the Emerald ECU. So I'm going to have to hit it with the laptop, which means I got to get Windows on my laptop in order to get that done. But we're, we're getting close. We're almost done. Um, I still got to sort it the brakes out, the whatever the, the pressure issue is. Um, I'm pretty sure the front circuits are good. It's just the rear circuit that continues to give me problems. Um, I started working on the nose cone already, uh, doing some clearance holes underneath and uh, uh, trying to get the clearance set between, uh, you can see the inside of the nose here and the underside of the radiator. Um, I haven't coated or, or done anything yet to any of the fiberglass. Um, and I may not simply because, uh, I'm running out of time to, uh, uh, well, I'm running out of time and patience for this particular kit so that we can get to the Ultima. So, uh, the pieces that need to be painted are, uh, the nose cone, the fenders, which are over there on the tires, and then the rear fenders, which are on the car, and then inside of the fender well, and... Uh, we do have some nicer weather, and uh, if I can, or uh, if I feel so inclined, I may do it then, uh, potentially next week. But really what I want to do is I want to get the, start the car started, finish up the wiring under the dash, which the only thing left is uh, the, the stuff for the windshield, and then the dash can go, and we can button up the... the interior of the car and then get the seats bolted in and we're pretty much done man i was really hoping the car would start uh that's that's uh real youtube drama question mark but uh honestly like that's that's how it goes sometimes is uh uh it, things don't pan out but it would have been really cool if it did uh i'm still excited though um i i really want to get this car done uh, and get it out of the garage. Um, I'm sure all of you who follow the, the, the Blue Unicorn build and the Ultima builds have seen the other Ultima builds that are popping up now. And uh, uh, Rob and Gabe are giving me a, a run for my money and they're getting me excited for my own build. And I really just want to get to that. And I don't know which is, which is uh, fueling me more at the moment is uh, just getting the zero done so I can get out and go for a drive before the winter weather hits or uh, get started on the Ultima RS rebuild and get that project going because now I have some competition. So uh, both of those are, are really good goals and I just can't wait to, to get going. But uh, with the, the zero, uh, like I said, just a few things left to do and, and we're done. We're, we're gonna be done with the zero project. Uh, but I did want to share a true, honest, first start attempt. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't work, but we know we know why. We know why it's not working. Um, there's probably just no tune in the box. That's fine. Uh, but we'll take our accomplishments and uh, we'll take our wins where we can get them, which is that uh, uh, all the runs are dry, all the pipes are dry, all the seals are dry. Everything works. We have oil pressure. We have fuel pressure. Like, those are all wins in my book, and I, I can't be happier. So uh, that'll do it for today. Um, I'm sorry for the lack of updates. It's been crazy in California. 
um, just with the fires and the heat waves and the smoke and everything like that. But we can get back on these projects now, get them finished and get it on the road. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Okay, that's terrible. I can't leave you guys like that. Uh, got my laptop set up, got the tuning software set up. So let me show you what the issue was. See how well this turns out. But uh, in the software, ECU configuration, injector outputs, uh, it was set to sequential. I had to set it to group and um, uh, the custom setup wasn't selected. Um, I had done actually quite a bit more troubleshooting than that just to verify that um, I had spark on the engine, that uh, everything was hunky-dory. So let's go ahead and fire her up. Okay, so there's that squeaking, and I'm trying to figure that out, and I think it's my uh, belt tension is too low. Oh, it might actually be a problem on the alternator, because that is really hot all of a sudden. Uh, one second, and I'll be right back with you. All right, so let's go ahead and try and start her up. So that was a big uh, gamble with this setup, was uh, the Mazda alternator, or Ford slash Mazda alternator. I was unsure that if you left it unplugged, if it would actually charge 13 and a half volts, and it does. Um, part of this lopy idle is uh, from running carbs. Back in the day, you have a, air sync meter so we're seeing what about six and a half almost seven there same thing seven there and about six and a half there so uh, I've been working on trying to get the uh, throttle body synced for airflow I'm pretty close I think that might be close enough but uh, give her a couple revs. Oh, she sounds good though. What are we idling? We're idling it. A little less than a thousand RPM. Actually, I'm gonna leave her running. Um, we're waiting for the fan to kick on. Check our temperatures. But we don't have much water temperature right now. Ditto for um, oil temperature. Just, I mean, the car's just idle. It'll take a while.
All right, so there you have it. Uh, we have a runner. Um, got a couple things to sort out. Um, there was a squeaking problem with the uh, pulley on the uh, alternator. So right here, um, looks like that's fixed. Um, I think it was rubbing on the housing or something like that. I, I don't, I'm not going to call that sorted yet, but um, it's good at the moment. Um, the other issue we found is our oil temperature sender, which is uh, down underneath here, uh, doesn't seem to be working. So we got to get that sorted. And then lastly, our uh, O2 sensor doesn't seem to be sending the signal, so we got to get that sorted. But uh, so far, I think that'll do it. So for reals this time, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.